Hey everyone, hope you're all doing very well. Welcome back to another one here on the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be taking you through my process to solder up a servo wire lead. Now what I'm essentially doing is taking two sections of servo wire and I'm gonna go and solder these here to one another. So you can see that one is already stripped of the individual wire so we can clearly see those. I'm gonna then do the exact same thing on the other lead here and then I'm gonna solder those together and use heat shrink to cover the solder joints. And once I've completed the soldering here on this servo lead, I'm gonna be able to take this single unit here and move it onto the application where I need it. Now what's unique about this video is that we have another product here sent by the company Finercy. I'm gonna grab it and show you some of the details here uh, right behind me. And I unbox this and I'm taking a look at the component and this soldering iron is actually quite small. It's quite small, it comes with the power supply for it and it allows you to digitally select the temperature so that you can dial it into the temperature that you can use here. It comes with a bunch of different soldering tips as well as a little stand to help keep it propped up and when you're going to go and want to actually put the soldering iron away it comes with a little cover that you can go and snap into place, rotate and there is your portable soldering iron. So we're going to use this here specifically in order to get this thing soldered up. Now I have an additional thing that I want to mention here in this video. We've done a lot of these products here however this one I'm gonna give this to somebody who is subscribed to the channel or a patreon member of the channel as well the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna post the details here near the end of the video so that you can follow along with those if you want an opportunity to go and win this and I'm gonna ship it out to one of you so this is the soldering iron that we're gonna be using here in the video now that we've gone over that what I want to do is make this the most simplistic process Process. If you are at home and you want to accomplish some soldering and you're just not sure how to approach it, you will be able to do so with the minimum amount of tools there at home in order to get this done. Let's go ahead and walk through that type of process. All right, let's dive into it. Take a look at the tools that I'm gonna be using here. So the first thing obviously is the soldering iron. What I've done already is connected the soldering tip inside of the gun so that this will work fine. I also have the power supply hooked up on the right side here that off the camera. And then we have that USB-C cable that's gonna be able to plug right into the back of the soldering unit. So with that being said, now we can go ahead and plug this in. And what you'll see is that it comes up with the Finerci logo. You can see exactly what it shows here up on the screen. And then the next thing that we gotta do is hit the arrow. And once we do that, then we're gonna go and see the temperature that we have it set to. It is set to 350 degrees Celsius. And then you can see how it's trying to make its way up to that point. And the percentage, I'd imagine, I haven't gone too deep into the book, but I'd imagine that represents the amount of power that this thing is receiving in order to hit that value. So as that's going through and setting itself up, getting up to temperature, we can go and look at some of the other items here, and that is getting our wires ready and configured. This is probably one of the most important things to do is get those wires ready so that we're ready to be able to solder them. So we're gonna do that, and the first thing I gotta do is remove off some of the insulation here. Now with these servo type wires that are relatively small in diameter, I'm going to go ahead and use these wire strippers on a gauge of 18. That's the smallest this will allow, so the wires are actually a little bit smaller than that, but this should work no problem. And I'm going to peel off some of the insulation and give myself enough room in order to actually make my termination point. So I've done that now on one of the three wires. I'm going to repeat this process and do it on the others, and then we can resume from there. All right, so I have now on all of these leads, there's six leads that we're gonna be you know, terminating here together to create three. The next step that we wanna take here is I actually wanna take some of this heat shrink tubing and I wanna place this onto our wire so that when we actually make our terminations, we have that ready to slide over the connection point and then heat up so I shrink it right on that connection point. Okay, the first thing I wanna do just before I slide on these heat shrink tubing sections onto our wire, I like to twist it in a clockwise manner. So I'm gonna go and hold the insulation, I'm gonna roll that in my fingers, and I'm gonna roll my other fingers in the clockwise direction here so that I'm making all the wire strands nice and tight. So I'm gonna do this for all six pieces of wire here, and once I have this complete, then we can go and slide on those heat shrink tubing sections onto each one of these wires. Now that I have the stranded wire twisted and nice and tight, I can simply just slide on these heat shrink tube sections all the way 
say I gave myself enough room here so that the heat of the soldering point is not going to start to shrink the heat tubing here. So now that I have these sliding over, we're going to make our way onto the next part of this video, which is going to be wiring these. Now that we have those heat shrink sections down, I want to make sure I'm matching up the correct colors because we're going to have six wires there, leaving us with three connections. And those three connections need to be matched up to the correct color so that we maintain the correct polarity on everything. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab our main power and the main power is going to be the orange wire here on this particular lead. And how I like to do this is I like to take them and I like to make like an X sort of shape. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wire and I'm actually going to wrap it around in both directions. So the wire coming off from my right hand side is going to go and get wound around the wire here. So I go ahead and do this right here. So what I've done is I've essentially made like an X shape here and then once I created the X shape I'm just wrapping each wire section around on the opposing side. So I get this sort of intertwined section leaving a, a little bit of a distance here of wire exposed but our heat shrink tubing should take care of that once we have it soldered. The reason I like to do it this way is because we get a nice tight connection point where the wires don't right now in its natural form don't want to really pull apart from each other because both sides are twisted tightly. The other thing that I like about this type of method is that it keeps the actual solder joint relatively thin in diameter so we're not going to have any bulger bulky part of the solder point and the third reason is is you're not going to really notice much of a difference here with the actual heat shrink tubing going over top you shouldn't end up with any large sections that are going to be sharp or anything using this type of method so now that we have that what we want to do is finish this off with the other wires here and then we can go and complete this by soldering those specific joints so let's go ahead and get that soldering iron back into the picture here and use it for the very first time. So now that we got the soldering iron, it should be all up to temperature here. It's saying 350 degrees Celsius and it's running at about 9% power. So it seems to be very stable at this temperature and that temperature should be plenty enough for us to solder these relatively thin diameter wires. These wires are probably uh, 20 gauge or less. I'm not sure of the exact gauge here, but I'm, I'm assuming it's somewhere 20 gauge or less. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna solder up our joints and the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna use the soldering iron to bring that wire up to temperature. And once it begins to get up to temperature, then the solder should start to melt and then it's gonna flow in the direction of the wire. And we will do that. We'll repeat that process for the remaining wire. So let's get started and take a look at how we do this. So I'm gonna start to bring the solder up here. I'm going to start to heat up the wire here and as I'm doing that I'm going to have the solder ready so as soon as it gets up to temperature it's going to melt and it shouldn't take too long to get up to temperature as it's a relatively thin piece of wire here so we can see that it's just starting to melt a little bit. Another thing that would make this a little bit easier, we can see the solder melting in position. I'm just doing the same thing on the whole length here as far as I can. You don't need to do the full length but it's good to do a good section of it. So now I'm going to try and get the solder to flow a little bit by just applying directly heat right where it is. We know that this solder got nice and hot. We saw it flowing right on the wire and if you see it actually moving on the wire, that's when you really know that that has been a good solid joint for you. All right, so we got the first one done right here and it looks like we have about a centimeter long section of solder. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing now on the others. And this, is, this would be a lot easier to do if you had helping hands. That is a little device. I have one in the closet there, but I don't really use it too often. And if I started to use it, I probably would use it more often. But a lot of the times I'm doing something and I have a process that already works for what I need to do. And in this case, all I'm doing here is I'm putting pressure on the back side of the wire and then I'm applying the solder on the other side and making contact. So I'm actually squeezing it and it becomes quite easy to work with. And this video is all about keeping it simple where you don't don't need all the tools of the trade to you know get some work around the hobby complete. So we'll just keep it in place and you can see it start to melt and as it melts there we got enough solder then flowing in the direction of this joint. We got a little bit of the insulation that burnt. That's okay. It got nice and hot. That's just what happens. Our insulation is going to get covered up by our heat shrink when we slide that over. And we got a really good solder joint right there. It's, it's pretty thick. It doesn't need to be that thick. It just turned out that thick because I had quite a bit of solder there ready for it. So now what I'm going to do on the last one here is I'll show you that the, you can use this if you want. You don't need to. We just did two joints without it. So I'm just going to go and put some on this surface here. 
of the wire connection of the joint. So now we have some external flux added. I'm gonna go and cap this back off. We won't need it anymore. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is apply the exact same process here. We're gonna go and apply some solder to the one side. And then from the other side, we're gonna make sure that we're heating it up so that we can seal off this last joint. This is the last one we got to do here. And then from there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the heat shrink and we're gonna position it over each one of these joints in order for us to seal the deal here. So I'm gonna go and start with the iron there. I'm gonna lay it on the soldering gun just on the tip. And then I'm gonna allow this solder to go and start to heat up and right away, look at how quick that went and it flowed really well. So you do get a lot more smoke with this, but look at how, how that well that ended up flowing. And the solder joint that we actually have is really clean using the flux and it happened really quickly, it was able to flow. So that's a really good solid joint. And what I really like about using that flux there is it seems to have a better thermal transfer. And regardless of what's happening here, the important point is that everything happens relatively quick when you apply that type of heat there. And what you can see is that it doesn't really burn the insulation off too much. And I'd rather not burn the insulation if I don't have to. So now we can go ahead and you know, put these heat shrink tubing sections over top each one of these joints. You just want to layer it over and you can do so just like that. And once you have that done, the next thing is to just apply some heat with a heat gun. And so I have like a 300 watt heat gun here and I'm going to use this. So there you have it. What I did is I actually just rotated the wire around so I can hit heat on one side and then flip it, hit it on the other side. And this makes sure that you have this down and reduced to its minimum diameter. And now that shouldn't move. What really helps this heat shrink stay in place is the difference in sizes there. So when you have the wire coming in and the solder joints are just a little bit bigger, because it's a little bit bigger and has thin sections on the side, it's not gonna wanna slide off too easily. And that's what keeps it in place. So another thing that you could do too, and before we got started is put another thicker heat shrink and what you do is you just slide that right now over top of this and I've done that before too. You slide it over top of this to keep this all nice and tidy as well. So you could do that if you prefer otherwise you can leave it just like this. This is a really good well soldered uh, joint. This is not going to come off and it's going to provide all the power that your servos need just from this quick process. Well, there you go guys. It's really quick and easy to get a few solder joints with minimal amount of tools. You really only need the soldering iron as we have the Venersi here in front of us, as well as some solder. You can have flux if you want. And then from there, you just need a good surface so that you can solder and not damage anything. So I have a solder pad that I placed here. I have to do this because right now I'm shooting this in the studio and I don't generally solder here. I also have helping hands, but it's something again that you can choose if you want. You're gonna spend the money, you can get that. It'll definitely help support a couple wires so that you have a little bit more strength with them. Otherwise, you can learn some of the techniques like we use in this video to help hold the piece as you're soldering it on. Another thing I like to do is have a fan run in the room so that it pulls away some of that solder smoke. It gets rid of it, so it's blowing in the opposite direction that I'm working in. It just makes it safer, it just makes it a lot easier to see. Now in order to win this unit, what I'm gonna ask you to do is to leave a comment in the comment section of this video down below. And what I want you to do is leave your Instagram username down there. I can't contact you through YouTube, so leaving your YouTube name is not really relevant for me. So leave your Instagram contact information so I can reach out to you you'll receive an entry for your username. And if you are part of the Patreon community here on the RC Explain channel, I'll leave a link in the description down below. You'll receive five entries for leaving your comment on the post that I make on the Patreon site. You'll see that if you go and are a member there. So that's how you will enter to win this. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you in another video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.